maybe because our team meeting was broken. But yeah. Okay, so oh, and of course, like so the refactoring of this is like I do it exactly the same way. It's like um, so maybe this thing is like a, you know, in HTML you're trying to build like um uh with like a class and this is like a header or something. I don't know if class can be imported directly. Yes, it can. Okay, so I've do class header and then in there I've got an ID with a bob, and maybe this is a common thing, or maybe it's like I'm building cards, you know, like uh, cards or what? I don't know what they're called. Are they called cards? Yeah. So it's like I might have a card structure, and in that card I have uh, the. This would probably be like class, you know, the header of the card, which would have some text, and then below this I might have the body of the card, which might have some other text, right? Um, if you're an HTML wizard. And so I could refactor that by saying, well, a card is just this. This is the card. And then I could parameterize these things. I could say, oh, that's the, the header. And this is the body. And then my card takes a header and a body. So then I can just replace this thing with like a card with uh, friends, none. You know what I mean? And they have created like a cool element which is that you know repeatable card, and here's my next card uh, online since never, and another card, you know, does it make sense, right? So you can kind of uh, make these cool, and and like this, I think is quite nice. I mean, it's like um, we're just using the language to build up HTML um, with with these nice names, and it kind of feels quite templatey, but actually, it's not template at all. Uh, these are all pure functions. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty cool. All right, that that does look a lot better. Um, yeah, okay. and so and so one of the approaches with this is like if you're building a single page app, you might have like the login page, and you might say the login page is like a div with all of its stuff, children and shit, and then you've got like the landing page. It's like another div with other stuff here. And then like your your actual view does something up here. It goes like case page of like, oh, I'm on the login page, then produce me the login page, HTML. Oh, I'm on the, you know, now the guy is logged in, uh, produce me the landing page. You know what I mean? We can use code to say, oh, which view should be rendered? So when the view tries to render the model, it can go, well, what is the state of the model? Oh, he's needs login, then I must generate in the login page. And then we, you know, we put the login page somewhere else. And that could be in another file even, no problem. Like the function for login page is somewhere yeah. else. And so you've kind of got like this, I don't know if you call this like the view model or something, um, uh, which is just implemented in pure functions, right? Just functions doing that. And, uh, and so that, that kind of makes sense. Like the view splits up very easily. The update function though doesn't split up that nicely. You have to think quite carefully about how it splits up. Um, and, and there's a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm not gonna get into them, but there, there are ways like the update function could handle certain parameters. And then if not, it could delegate to another update function to handle the other, the other bits of it. But the, pro the kind of problem is that it really comes down to this at the end of the day is like, you, if your model, I mean your messages, sorry, your, yeah, your, your, your my messages type, your update function needs to be able to exhaustively match all of those. So it kind of feels already like you're going to have to um, have a big update function. Another potential option is to say, well, I've got many different states in my system. This is only the state of like the joke fetching thing. So you could say, my, and now I'm getting into like how you might do this, but you might say, um, so my my messages has got like jokes messages as a type, and and then it's also got like uh, my profile uh, type areas or whatever. And then the my jokes is is, is another subtype. Um, and so jokes messages get a jokes messages uh, type or something like that. And then you at the update function you handle the big objects and then you break them down to the smaller ones and you delegate down to the smaller update functions for those. It's potentially another way of, of going. Also, it feels horrible though. Um, I'd say as soon as you start doing it, you're probably running out of Elm. Um, 
you, you're kind of hitting the boundary a little bit. Um, don't don't do that. I, I would think. I don't know. Maybe you've got a good idea. It's worth playing with. It's worth playing. With. Okay. Yeah. So where were we? Did I break something? No. I'm just gonna kill all this shit. Oh, should we keep that cool my button? Yeah. Why not? Oh, and I had card. Okay. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. And um, oh yeah, we could write the definitions for these. Oh, it's miss it says actually missing the type annotation. So can I actually have it cited for me? Add inferred. Oh, huh, so good. So it knows my button is a sorry. My button is a something that takes a type of message. Yes, a string, which is the label. So message, it's keeping this open again. It's saying like, it can actually be used. So the, this function, my button, doesn't have to be used for my messages, actually, because it doesn't know, it doesn't do anything with it. It doesn't care about it. It just puts it here as the on click. So in fact, it, this is called keeping it open. It's like, it hasn't been concrete about the type of my message. We know that down of message, sorry. We know down here that it is actually of type my messages. We know that. Um, but I could actually still, I think, go here. I could keep it open here. Oh, maybe I can't. Why not? Is the error? Okay. It produces my, so here the command is saying, you definitely are producing my messages, but your thing says it should be open. So it uses this, which means any time value can flow through, but your code is specifically one saying my messages value. Maybe you change it to be more specific. Okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's saying it doesn't, we don't ever, like, uh, we, we, we're not at all specific about the type action that comes in here. We just pass it on, sort of untouched. We don't interrogate it. We don't create a new one, nothing. We just pass it through. And so technically, this is a, a very um, generic function because we could call my button with something else, actually. Um, it doesn't actually matter what it is. As long as my click can take it and it only requires a me message, we're good. Um, and I would say that's totally fine. This means your my button can be used in other cases. But probably in this scenario, I would say, you know what? Like, I'm pretty specific about what my button should be used for. And so I would personally generally put down the, the actual type here, but keep it open, why not? Um, okay. Oh, yes, this is what we were doing. Oh, should we actually see this app work? Hopefully it still runs. How do I do it? Uh, start JSON. Oh, run start. Oh, yes, we broke it. Okay. We broke this because this should have been expect string, right? Good. And now our cool app hopefully works. Does it work? No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it work? It does work. Okay. This so Elm being funny. All righty. Okay, so this worked, right? Get joke. Broke because of network issue, random. Oh, yeah, that was the old one. Get joke. Uh, it broke because of network issue because I think we were changing the, the address there. Okay, so now we, we're back to working. We're getting some, some, some stuff here. So let's just, I'm just going to put this in here and beautify it so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so that's the JSON we're getting back from this thing. And probably what, so what do we want to do? We want to look at, are we interested in any of this stuff yet? Not really. Probably just the value, right, inside this JSON. Does that make sense? So we remember seeing, well, can anything like Helm uh, JSON decode? Sounds good. JSON decode. Actually, where did we see this fixed string? Let's go there. Oh, yeah, HTTP package. Expect string we good with. And then there was a cool expect JSON. Okay, great. All right. And so let's see what we get. Get some error saying the first thing is funny. The argument is type this, but get needs the first argument to be. Uh, there, there's uh, it's using the little hash. Often look for these little hash jobbies. It's kind of trying to demarcate where in the line the issue is. So it's saying this argument is of that 
is a record of type this JSON decoder did decoder. So expect needs to be something that takes a decoder of string and gives me an expect of my message. But get needs the first argument to be expect of message. So this, there's something funny there, right? Um, in the expect. So let's go have a quick look. Let's just compare these quickly. Expect string took that constructor, which was a oh, got joke, yeah. The got joke we remember is our constructor, which takes obviously a string and produces us a my message. Is that correct? Yeah. And it is itself an expect message. Great. So expect JSON is like the same thing as its first parameter, but it takes this other parameter called decoder of type A. And it also gives us back an expect message. So that's cool. It's just like there's a there's another parameter to expect JSON. The first one being yes, this thing from an A to a message, but the second parameter is a decoder of that type A, which is that type there. A is that A. This one is always string. This one is like, oh, some other type, some other thing. So okay, okay. So let's see how we do that. Um I wonder what a decoder is. Well, let's see if we can schnaff an example. Oh, that's even better. Um, here we go. Got GIF using GIF decoder. GIF decoder is a decoder of string. Great. Takes a field data, a field image URL and string. So that feels to me like a nesting type thing. There's like an image URL inside an object called data. A field holds another field. Um, I mean, this might just be like that simple, actually. It's because all we want to do is we just want to get value as a string, right, out of this object. So let's just make one of these little cool decoders. So what do we call this? The joke value decoder. Decoder is a decoder of string, I think. I think we want it to be a string at the end. So it's always going to be constructed. It's going to, at the end of the day, it's going to be decoded with a string. That makes sense. And we'll get into detail where it's like some other type, something not as simple as a string. And we can just say this thing is a field value. It's not. Oh, we probably field have to... value. Yeah. Field value string as well, because we need to tell it that it's a string. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. I hear you. I just wanted to see why it can't see decoder. I probably need to import this elm.json, right? Elm.json. Yes. Good. An error there, but hopefully decoder can now guess what it is. Uh, can't it? What is type decoder? It's in json.decode. Yeah, decode. So I just need to do that part of the decoder. Oh, exposing. Exposing. Decoder. That's all from that one. Yes. Field. Okay, so let's let's dig through this. What is a field? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, so well, let's have a look. So it's like the field. So the field, field as well. Say again. Um, I'm going to import exposing field after decoder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right, yes. Decode, good, good, good. Field, correct. I think there'll still be a problem, though. Um, so if we look at what does field do, it takes a string, so the name of the field, it's always a string, the name of it is always, a, is in JSON, is always named by strings, right? All fields are given strings in JSON. And then its second parameter is like another decoder, and you go like, oh, okay, but wait a minute, like that's too much, like too many decoders here. But it's probably because there are built-in, there are some handy built-in decoders that come with this thing. Um, I think it was, uh, was it Damien who shouted out the word string afterwards? So there's probably yep. a function called string here, which is, oh, come on, give us the decoder called string. There's like the word string everywhere. We just type it and guess. Surely there's a decoder of string. 
uh, what if I got a string is of type decoder? Ah, there we go. And um, right at the top, so there's a function called string, which is already a decoder of string. So it's just like a plain. So it's just like uh, if you were decode. We we can actually we should play with this in the repo because this would be quite interesting. Um, but I think that's probably our answer here. Is decoder of string, and then we need to import that obviously. Okay, joke value decoder. So we'll we'll play with this now, and I'm pretty sure if we put that there, we fix it. Let's see if it works. Why wouldn't it work? It's broken. The compiler doesn't properly reload, or I'm doing it funny or something. Get joke. There we go. Look, it's just grabbing the string. Um, so that's good news. But why the hell does that happen? So let's just play with this quickly. Let's just go import this function, this library. And now I can hopefully say, so if effectively what we're saying is, if I go string with Tom, I'm, I'm calling the, sorry, if I just, if I call, if I say string time. Oh, why do I have to? Yep. Just, say, just say import the json.decode exposing and then like dot dot between the brackets. So it'll pull everything in. Like that? Is it JSON or decode? Oh. Decode. Decode exposing all things. Good. Okay, so we've got a function we know is called string. So, okay, so that makes sense. Um, uh, maybe no, it doesn't really make sense actually yet. And it's probably because we haven't like run this thing yet. Is there a way to like run the decoder? Yeah. Okay, we can run the decoder. Um, Let's try this. We're going to call this decode string thing, decode string. And it's like, well, which decoder do you want to use? I want to use the one that's built in, the one which decodes strings. What string am I going to give it? So this is now the JSON. And it's like, I could give it like actual real JSON. But keep in mind that primitives in JavaScript are also um, valid JSON, right? So the I, I could have a JSON file which just holds five in it. I suppose, how would I demonstrate this? JSON validate. But it is a cool website which can validate JSON. Yay, can I validate five? And it says, yes, five is valid JSON. So it's like, oh, I can decode. So it, five is just, you know, it's like an int, but it is valid JSON, even though, you know, most of the time you're expecting JSON to open bracket and then have like a value with five or something, and that's valid JSON, cool. But it could just be five. You know, that is valid JSON. The other piece of valid JSON is just pure string. So the pure string Tom is valid JSON. Uh, 3.555 is also valid JSON. Um, I don't think there's much else that is valid JSON. Probably a Boolean. False is valid JSON, but false E is not valid JSON. So, um, so like JavaScript prim uh, primitives are valid JSON. Oh, array is valid JSON. That would be another one. Okay. Empty array is valid. Array with things in it is also valid, obviously. Um, but probably, the, you know, you probably encounter this very little. But effectively, the this guy, this function string, that one there is the decoder that is built in that can just parse the string, the raw plain string like that, and give it back to you. So here we can give him an example and say, hey, decode string using the string decoder, the JSON Tom. Um, and that, of course, doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? It's not a valid. This is not valid, Jason. Expected because it doesn't have quotes. Oh, yeah, 100%. Good one. Yes, of course, it doesn't have quotes because this is not valid, Jason, right? Tom, like that. So that's actually our error. Yeah, good one, Damien. So it's the same error. So in fact, like it has to have like, oh, my. Oh, my shell is like can't can't handle that. It's too much, too difficult. Can and I don't think I can use single quotes in JSON, right? No, I don't think you can in JavaScript, but not in JSON. So I need to decode string string open quote Tom close quote close quote. Are you happy with that? 
Yes. Okay. And that gives us an okay with Tom. And it's like decode. So if we have a quick look at decode string again. Oh man, what a nightmare. Run decoders, there he is. Um, yours, it, it's very interesting to see that the decoder of A there matches that A there. So what we're expecting to get is a result with an error and an A. So if it's a decoder of string, we expect a result with an error and a string. Does that make sense? So string, like we've combined these two awesome thingies. Um, so I think I could in the ripple. I don't know, my terminal seems to be breaking. Oh, it's like terrible. Can I go, what is the type of decode string? No. How do I ask the type of something in Elm? Help. Shows this information. Yeah, that's very useful. Yeah, okay. I can't ask the type of Elm. Elm ripple type. Get type. Get type. I find the type of a function in the repo. So ask stack overflow. Or you just kind of put it and then it tells you the type. Okay. Okay, not too useful. Um fine. Some repos you can ask the type. Uh anyway. It, let's just let's just make that more obvious though. So if we lift out that little function there, and we put it there. So decode string takes a decoder of type A. Given a string, we'll return a result of an error of that same type there. And then we knew earlier that string was a function giving us a decoder of string. Yeah. So we can just use like type level replacement fun here. So if we go decode string with string, that is now changing. So we're, we're putting we're putting that into that position, right? Which is going to give us a one of these thingies. So A equals string, so we know that that will become a string. So that's what our decode string is going to do. Given a decode of string and a string will give us a result of an error of string. And we looked at what does result in error of string previously. And that's why we're getting this like funny okay thing happening, right? Comfortable with that. So I think if we then had an example where, it, oh, where my thing didn't suck, decode. again. I look like my terminal's broken. We're going, no, run decoder. What was that called? Uh, the decode decode strings. Sorry, decode string. String, and we give it a five. It would be like an error, not an okay. And it's like, oh, it expected a string as an error of its first type. Okay. Um, is that like too gymnastic -y? But like that solves our funky little, very simple, like we're just looking for one little property inside an object here for, for this thing. So actually, you know, this is probably overkill. The joke value decoder, I probably could have just said, you know what, like, because it's so simple, we could just expect a JSON, please call got joke when you get it, and you're looking for a field, uh, which is a string, a field called value, which is a string us to expect JSON. Yeah. Do we want to do something more complicated? Or is that too complex? For me, it started breaking down when you get categories first. And then you select your category to generate that joke. That was complicated. Oh, uh, yeah. I could do it, but I couldn't do it nicely. It didn't feel right. Yeah. I'm yeah, also, I, a little, I, I'm also a little curious on like deserializing the whole object. Uh, maybe it's not that important for like the Chuck Norris one, but thinking in a normal application, you normally don't just want one value out of an object you're getting back from a server. Yeah. So like actually decoding yeah. it further yeah. or more complicated. Okay. So maybe what we should do is we should like also get the ID maybe and just do something with it just so that we can deal with this like um, uh, more than one field problem, right? Shall we do that? 
and then we can, or even the created ant, or one, or I don't know, something else, right? Um, let's just get the idea of the of the joke as well, and let's just see, because it's certainly that's where it gets a little bit more complex. So, um, how would we do that? Let's have a look. So, so maybe what we so 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 here's one approach. Here's one approach. This is what I would typically do. Is I'd say, okay, so what is the joke that we're going to get back from the server? Uh, there's probably some fields that I don't care about, and those are cool. I just like don't deal with them. But I'll say, hey, there's something that comes back with a value, and it comes back with an ID. They're both strings. Great. So let's make a type to represent that like server so that joke uh, type, right? Um, so I would make a type, type of alias, and it's like a joke. What does a joke look like? Um, a joke has got a value, which is a string. And it's got a, sorry, I should probably put that first. It's got an ID, which has a string. And like, notice the cool formatting here um, with the comma in front. Oh, it looks so horrible if you're used to C Sharp eh? or Java. You just go, oh, I can't, it hurts my eyes to look at it. Um, you get used to it. It actually looks more beautiful than in the C Sharp version. Look how beautifully it lines up, everything lines up in columns. Um, anyway. Okay, so what we want at the end of the day is actually what we're trying to build is a joke decoder. So we'll use this concept again, but we don't want it to come back with a string. We want it to come back with like a joke, right? We actually want to build a decoder of jokes, you know, this time. That makes sense. Um, so the idea there is like, okay, well, how does that work? How do we decode a joke? And I'm pretty sure this thing gives us some great examples of how to do that. Um, it's probably in the mappy functions, which I saw here. Yeah. So let's actually, let's actually, I wonder if I can use a type alias here, interestingly, but let's see. What I want to do is, is let's actually define this type in the REPL. So can I, so I know I can construct a joke by going, uh, sorry, ID, so I go equals one or something and value equals Tom. I think that creates me a joke. No, it needs the first argument to be a string. So I go colon, oh, look at my, my terminal is broken. Let me just open a new one. Uh, functional programming lib, Elm. Um, ripple. Paste this thing. Or maybe I could load this. Yeah, I'll just paste it. I got a joke. How do I create a new one? Is it with colon? One value Tom. No. Is it an equals? Did I not use an equals before? Oh, you are kidding me. My terminal's broken. Um, and it's hugely irritating. Oh, okay. So can I construct a joke? How do I create a joke? Does anyone know? Do I go joke? So I go x equals joke id equals five and value equals Tom, right? Is that correct? Is Tom is x now a joke? Yeah, that's right, Tom. Oh, it's so not. Tom, what I usually what I usually do is I start with a build up and then end with a punchline. That's how I build okay. a joke. I, you're right. Yeah, that might just be me. I need, I need your help here, Drickus. I need your help. No, so the <laughs> issue here actually is like, this is a type alias. It's not an actual first class type. It's an, a, so what, what the, the, we've, and we've actually got the two here. We can actually see both of them here. Alias means that the name joke is equivalent to like replacing it with these brackets here. Not with, it's not a constructor necessarily. So, um, and so I'm actually calling it here as if it's a constructor. This would be more, that would be more yeah. correct, as you would say, yeah. X is of, is of this type joke, but really joke is an alias for a record with an ID and a value. You know what I mean? Um, and so I'm not trying to construct it with the joke constructor. I'm just creating a, because I could also say that um, X is of type. ID with a string and value, which is a string. Like I could also do that. I could just say, you know what, X is just 
It's just a record. Its type is a record with an ID and a string. I'm not naming it. I don't have to give it a name. If, if I don't like that, I can choose to give it a name by using type alias, right? Yeah. Um, we'll see why this is maybe bad in our scenario here. We actually probably want the constructor, actually. Uh, that was the point I was trying to make, is the constructors are, are interesting. So let's drop this. And now we can't define a joke. It's just a raw record anymore because it needs to be it needs to have a constructor which takes that record as a parameter. Um, I don't know how best to format that back there. Probably, actually, probably like this. That would probably be the best way to format it. So we say, hey, type is a the type joke takes a joke constructor, which is two parameters, an ID and a value. I could also choose. I mean, maybe the best way to do this is we say actually it takes two strings. The one is an ID. The other one is a is the value of that joke. So we won't name them for now. So if we want to construct a joke, we say we call joke and we give it five and we give it the pun the what is it the punchline yeah. So we end with the punchline right. And now we can construct a joke. So now we know we've got a we've got kind of like joke is like a function which takes a string and a string and gives us a joke. So joke is a constructor of jokes, right? So if, if we look down at the, the, the map functions, this is effectively the way we use it to build up larger types. Is we, like if we look at, so map is like not that interesting, but map two is something which takes a decoder of type A, a decoder of type B gives us a value, a decoder of type value. But the first parameter to that is in like, a record of A, not a record, sorry, an element of A, an element of B, and something that gives us a value. Um, so if we squint our eyes here a little bit, we could probably build one of these using map. Let's just do it and see what happens. We go map two. Um, the first decoder is the one where I want to get the ID, right? And we know that we can do that by going field ID, which is a string. Sorry, this, this is not the first parameter. This is the, I'm dealing with the second parameter of map. So the first one is like this, I don't know, this funny function that we need to write. I'm going to leave it out. So, but the first one is the decoder of string, which is going to take that field ID. The second one is going to take the field value, which is a string. Um, and the whole thing is going to give us a decoder of type of value, right? And it's like, well, what is that? Value. We know that it needs to be a joke at the end of the day. So it's like we have to provide a function that given an A and a B will return a value. So we could actually just do it like that. We could say write a function. Um, how do we do that? I think we go backslash ID and value. There's a function. We're given the ID and the value. I want to now give you back a joke. So it's like, oh, I know how to do that. I just call joke with the ID and the value. You know what I mean? I call the joke constructor with the ID and the value, and that will give us a joke. Map2 probably needs to be imported. Let's see if that has worked. We've broken stuff elsewhere, have we? Constant of X. Oh, I've got another X. Yeah. Right? So we've no, we, we, we can see now how we can combine the fetching of more than one field from something using map two. And it's like, okay, this is where shit is funny and you're gonna laugh, but like, what if you needed three? No, no problem, there's a map three that takes three decoders and gives you a decoder. And there's a map four, which takes four decoders and gives you a decoder and map five and map six and map seven and map eight, which gives, and it's like, okay, but what about map nine? And it's like, oh, you've run out of, you've run out of, you can't have objects with more than eight fields, right? Obviously. So, so interestingly, when I look at this, is there any way, could I replace this with anything? Just joke. Yeah, exactly. Just joke, because joke is a re joke is a function which takes an ID and a value, right? We know that it takes an ID and a value. So we don't need to like make a new function which calls that thing. It is that function, right? So there's the simpler way of doing it.
Ja. So it's not too bad. Not horrible. Not terrible. But it's not, it's not that nasty, is it? Um, so that gives us a joke. So now I suppose we could then follow them. We're not actually calling this out. Can you guys hear my cat? He's shouting at you guys. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we're not doing it yet. We now want, to, like, let's follow the compiler now. So as soon as we paste this joke decoder there and we press save, um, oh, it gives us an error here. Ah, okay. So it says the joke decoder value is a decoder of joke, but expect JSON needs a second argument to be a, a decoder of string. Okay. So, and it's like, well, what's the issue? Um, what is the issue? Is it because got joke is something which is expecting a string and not a joke? Probably. Decoder of string. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's like can't construct, can't call got joke. Got joke needs a string. So it's like, ah, okay, there's our issue. So we can change that to a joke. Follow our compiler again. It's like, oh, okay. Now the issue is, hey, dude, you can't. So now value, oh, let's follow it. It says this value is the value called value is a joke, but it should be a string. And it's because we're going, oh, a joke. Equal, so our model obviously has a field which has got this thing called a joke and it is a string and you can't just assign that. It's like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. Um, so how do we solve this? Any ideas? I mean, it's crap to start with, but um, can we fix the crap? Couldn't you deconstruct the string out of joke? Yes. Good idea. So we want to get the string out of here. We just want value here, right? We know value is a string. So how would we get it? The cheaty way, not the cheaty way, actually the best way of doing it is we know that OK comes with, uh, with a joke with an ID and value up there, right? We just deconstruct it. So now we've got an ID and a value, and we're good. We're good again. You agree? And so now you've got this ID that you're probably not doing anything with. I don't know what this is complaining about. Right. So I suppose we could say, hey, the ID is something. I don't know how to string join again. Is it just plus, plus, plus? With the ID, plus, plus, the value, plus, plus, the value. And now we can put it back in the web page, which will be so amazing. Um, get joke. Ah, we got an ID and a value. So that's cool. Yeah. So that was a more interesting decoder, and we used this mappy thing to do it. I do hear you. You saying, yeah, but sometimes you have JSON with more than eight thingies. And I would agree that that could be an issue. Not common. Um, I'm sure that there is an alternate way. I do remember seeing it. There's a whole section on decoders. Check it out. Let's go look at that. Click the blue button. No, I don't want to do that. Um, some JSON. Oh, here's some nested stuff. Okay, there's that's quite cool. So there's a data with a title or something. Hey, look. It's close. It's almost there. Decoder of int gives us 42. Decoder of string gives us Tom. Their docs are so good, actually. Age decoder is a field age, decodes us an int. Great. Name, nested decoders, that's what we want. Ah, look, it's like so simple actually. So remember that the last parameter to field was a decoder itself. So, and field itself creates your decoder. So you can, of course, have, you know, nested, nested stuff. So, like, for example, if this looked, if this thing was inside that very common structure of saying, actually, we always have this like data or reply or something. And then in that, we've got this thingy. You know, if you had that kind of look and feel, 
um, then like very simply you would just go like well I have this field called data and it takes a decoder which, sorry which would which would be like a map to again of like the joining of these two things you know it would look something like that the nested and would that be a map that would just be a map one I think which I really haven't imported So Tom, if you have like an object with 10 um, properties, would you then have like two separate map eight types that map like this one? Or, I mean, a, a one map eight and one map two that then you use together to decode an object. Oh, you mean if you had more than eight in one yeah. big line? Yeah. <laughs> it would be weird, man. You, I mean, you could do multiple maps, could you? Yeah. Oh, it would be so horrible because then you would have these like partially constructed. Objects. You'd have to like construct two objects, two different ones, and then you'd have another way of joining them together. I don't think you would do that at all. I think. Um, uh, looking yeah, at yeah. the docs that you had open earlier, the original decode docs just under map, yeah. they mention a JSON decode pipeline. But I think that's okay, a yes. library when you essentially make a pipeline saying, okay, I need this, I need this. If you find this, so what? Yes. But exactly. Perfect. Exactly. So it's like a possibly a different approach. Um, oh, okay. It's common to decode into record that has a type alias. Yeah, also, okay, yes. Another another issue here was that remembering this thing is going to call joke so it's going to call a function with a string and a string it's not like a an id of a string and a value of a string you know what i mean like that's a record and that is on one type that's one parameter which would be like a record d uh, record record decode down here um, and that was using the alias thing which i avoided because it would have been too dangerous for now this I, th I think this alternative, JSON decode pipeline, yes, I remember looking at this. No Red Ink, Red Ink is the company that Evan used to work for. So it is possible that he wrote this and that it's kind of first class. It just belongs to No Red Ink. Um, but and they, it looks like they have like a different approach to it. You know, so there's, it's called JSON decode pipeline. It exposes some other stuff. Um, you create a record which has got an ID, email name percentage all of different types and you go decode.succeed you want that type at the end and then sort of a set of requirements which is quite cool actually so that's obviously much more extensible because there's no like uh, these things are like joining things together to create a decoder effectively so this is probably probably neater yeah um, possibly reads better as well for more comprehensive JSON. But I think if you're probably just snacking one little value out of a JSON, like an hour stupid, you know, just yank it straight out of there, out of this JSON, grab one field, which is already a string, we just do that up there. Yeah. But yeah, this was probably more comprehensive. But it looks to me like it still creates us um, a decoder. So we're still getting that decoder type out. So nothing would change in our code. At, you know, they expect it all work exactly the same because it requires a decoder of that type. These things are just like fancier decoders. Yeah, but they don't change the library underneath. We still, nothing changes. Yeah, it's just the way, and you could mix and match them. You could use some decoders from the pipeline and some from the regular um, JSON.decode library. They would mix together perfectly because they interact at that decoder level. It's pretty cool, actually. Nice way of like, they would, they, you could freely use them. In different ways. All right. I think we're out of time. Do you think next time should we try and do the categories? Let's finish off with like a, and that's maybe a good end to Elm actually, would be like, let's query the categories first and then fetch a joke for a category. And it's like, there we're going to now struggle with like a more complex and interesting model. Because like at the moment, we've got this like very, 
dumb single dimensional model where we throw everything in together. But like once we put categories in here, we're going to start to create some interesting dependencies. Like you need to fetch a category first before you can fetch a joke. Um, and I think this was like some of Chart's stuff he was saying. He struggled with a little bit. Am I right, Chart? Yeah, that's it. And how do you um, how do you model different states? Is what got yeah. It. yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So let's try that. This will be like now using our smart brains that we have to like model this nicely so that we're not fighting the language and making use of some of these structures to keep type safety. Because what we, certainly what we don't want to do is create some sort of like idea of like a nullable string or something. It's like, oh, sometimes you've got a joke, but only if we've got in a category. Because like if you think about this already, it's already showing like some crappy stuff here, like no jokes yet, you know. So it's like, yeah, we, you know, we've got this weird state where as the application starts up, it's got a joke called no jokes yet. And it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like that's not a good, that's not good design, right? And in JavaScript, you would have undefined here or null or something. And it's still like, yeah, those are not great ideas. So can we get rid of that um, and make this like more obvious that like when I'm fetching, I probably don't have one of these. Once I've fetched, I might have one of these, you know what I mean? And it would have a value at that point. So let's like model the, the state of the application better um, so that we can never put it into funny, funny states. Because like by definition, this is a funny state. That's a weird state. That's sometimes a joke. And, and also down here, sometimes like a joke actually holds an error message. It's also like, what the fuck, right? Not great, not good, not good software. Do you agree? So maybe we can just model out some of those better ideas, like better, so that it's more obvious. So I'll write a little note here. What we're going could to we, do. Could we do pair programming next time. Yes, or good idea. Mob programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keen. Is, is anyone keen to mob program, by the way? I'm going to click stop recording. <laughs>